In an earlier video, we looked at the graphs of y equals sine x and y equals cosine x. In this video, we're going to extend on to graphing the functions y equals tangent x and y equals cotangent x. Now, I've started by setting up our coordinate plane by having our x-axis and our y-axis, and I've just done the grids the way we normally see them. So, positive 1, negative 1 on the y-axis, and then the same increments along the x-axis. Because we want to draw this graph with values that we're fairly comfortable with and that we can get without a calculator if we don't have that handy, we want to look at where the placement of our special angles would be on our coordinate plane. Well, our special angles in radians, remember, because when we're graphing, we have to have real numbered inputs. So even on your graphing calculator, if you were checking this, you would have to always make sure that the mode is in radian mode to graph the trig functions and have the calculator give you an accurate graph of it. Well, remember our, our actual nice values, our special angles and radians are pi over 0, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, pi over 2, etc. through. Um, and for tangent and cotangent, we actually had really nice outputs when we had like our 0, and our pi over 4, and then at pi over 2, we had where they were, um, we had either defined or undefined, etc. So we want to actually increment it that way. So when we think about our pi would fall just a little past 3, and then 2 pi would be a little past 6. So there's my pi, there's my 2 pi, and placed it that way because pi is approximately 3.14159. And then 2 pi, if you multiply 2 times 3.14159, you get 6.28, etc. So that's where we have our values to the right. To the left, I'll have a negative pi, just a little bit further left of negative 3. And then halfway between from 0 to pi is our pi over 2. And then halfway between pi and 2 pi is our 3 pi over 2. And then halfway between 0 and negative pi is our negative pi over 2. So now if we make a table of values where our input is our angle and our output is our tangent of our angle for graphing tangent function first, let's go ahead and put in some of these values. We're going to leave some space at the top to actually put some negative values in for the angles in a few minutes. But right now we're going to start with an angle value of 0 and then an angle value of my pi over 4, and an angle value of pi over 2, and then 3 pi over 4, and then pi. Okay, so I'm going to break this up a little bit further. Halfway between 0 and pi over 2 is pi over 4. Halfway between pi over 2 and pi is 3 pi over 4. And then see what we get from that. All right, so then 0, well, the tangent of 0, remember the tangent of an angle is the sine of the angle divided by the cosine of the angle. So the tangent of 0 is the sine of 0 divided by the cosine of 0. The sine of 0 is 0, the cosine of 0 is 1. So 0 divided by 1 is 0. How about pi over 4? Well, the tangent of pi over 4 is the sine of pi over 4 divided by the cosine of pi over 4. Well, remember with the pi over 4, those are the 45 degree angles. So that's when the legs were exactly the same measure. So that's where we had square root of 2 over 2 for the sine of pi over 4 and square root of 2 over 2 also for the cosine of pi over 4. Well, a non-zero number divided by itself is just the number 1. So the tangent of pi over 4 is 1. Pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0. 1 divided by 0 is undefined. So this is the first time, if we've just looked at the sine, the graph of the sine of x and the graph of cosine of x, this is the first time where we had a value that was undefined. Then 3 pi over 4, well 3 pi over 4 is a second quadrant angle. So in the second quadrant, you have to go from the origin, you have to go left and up. So our sine of 3 pi over 4 is positive the square root of 2 over 2, but our cosine of 3 pi over 4 is negative the square root of 2 over 2. 
So a number divided by its opposite is going to give you negative 1. <clears throat> and then at pi, you have 0 again. How about at negative pi over 4? Well, remember, negative pi over 4 is the angle going down. So negative pi over 4 is a fourth quadrant angle. And so I'll get negative 1 for that again. And then for negative pi over 2, I'm going to have undefined. Now, at the undefined, we're going to have vertical asymptotes because that denominator was 0, but the numerator wasn't 0. So I have a vertical asymptote at negative pi over 2, a vertical asymptote at pi over 2. I would actually also get a vertical asymptote at 3 pi over 2. So my tangent function's domain is going to be where the tangent of an angle is undefined um, at all of the odd coefficients in front of pi divided by 2. So it's not all reals anymore like it was for sine and cosine. There's infinitely many places where it's undefined. Then when I have an angle of negative pi over 4, it's negative 1. At 0, it's 0. At pi over 4, it's positive 1. And so the tangent function looks like that. And when I go to like 3 pi over 4, I have where it's negative 1 again. Miss that dot. And then at pi, it's 0 again. At um, 5 pi over 4, it's 1 again. So it actually is repeating the same picture it had before right away. So when I think about where the snip is, where if I laid it over, it would create the same picture that I already had, it actually is from 0 to pi before it starts to repeat itself again. So the period of the tangent function is pi not 2 pi, like for the period for sine of, of x or cosine of x or secant of x or cosecant of x. Those are all 2 pi. The period for tangent of x is pi. And then this is for the domain. It's all reals except pi over 2 where k is an odd integer so that we have the domain, all reals except k pi over 2, where k is an odd integer. And the range, now look at this for the range. When I look from, scan from bottom to top for the range, I have that y values from negative infinity all the way up to positive infinity. So here my range is negative infinity to infinity. Okay, now let's look at y equal the cotangent of x. For y equal the cotangent of x, we're again going to make our table. And here we are going to put in our negative pi over 2, negative pi over 4, 0, pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, and then um, pi. 5 pi over 4, 3 pi over 2. That'll probably extend it out enough for us to get a really good view of what's going on. And remember, the cotangent of an angle is the cosine of the angle divided by the sine of the angle. Again, we're going to do the positive angles first, and then after we've reminded ourselves of the values, come back and do the negative angles. Now that we have our angles decided, let's go ahead and mark them on our coordinate plane. Remember, my pi is just a little bit past 3. My 2 pi is a little bit past 6. My negative pi is a little bit to the left of negative 3. Then halfway between, I have my pi over 2s and the 3 pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. Then pi over 4 is halfway between 0 and pi over 2. 3 pi over 4 is halfway between pi over 2 and pi. 
5 pi over 4 is halfway between pi and 3 pi over 2. And then um, I have 7 pi over 4 is halfway between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi. I have negative pi over 4 and then negative 3 pi over 4. So that gives us some values there. So at 0, the cotangent is undefined. Cosine of 0 is 1. Sine of 0 is 0. 1 divided by 0 is undefined. Pi over 4, my cotangent of pi over 4 is 1. It's a square root of 2 over 2 over the square root of 2 over 2. At pi over 2, the cosine of pi over 2 is 0, but the sine of pi over 2 is 1. 0 divided by 1 is 0. 3 pi over 4, that's a second quadrant angle. So I'm going to get a negative 1 for the cosine of 3 pi over 4 divided by the sine of 3 pi over 4. They're opposite in sine. So I have where it would be negative the square root of 2 over 2 divided by positive the square root of 2 over 2, which would be negative 1. At pi, it's undefined again. At 5 pi over 4, that's a third quadrant angle. Both the cosine of 5 pi over 4 and the sine of pi over 4 are negative square root of 2 over 2, but a negative divided by a negative is an overall positive. And then my 3 pi over 2, I'll get a 0 again. So then at negative pi over 4, that's a fourth quadrant angle, so that'll be negative 1. And then at negative pi over 2, we're going to get that that is a 0 value. So when we graph these, at negative pi over 2, it's 0. At negative pi over 4, it's negative 1. At 0, it's undefined. At pi over 4, we get 1. At pi over 2, we get 0. At 3 pi over 4, we have negative 1. And at pi, it's undefined. Then at 5 pi over 4, it's 1. At 3 pi over 2, it's 0. And then as we would continue on, we would have our graph of our y equal cotangent of x look like. So when I look at this graph, I see that there, again, are infinitely many different places where the cotangent function is undefined, but now it's happening at, happening at um, 0, at pi, at 2 pi, etc. So my domain is all reals except k pi, where k is an integer, and then the range is all reals, negative infinity to infinity, and the period. So when you look at how far the spread is before Four repeats itself over and over is a span of pi. So hopefully the video helps you envision what the graphs of these trig functions are for y equal tangent of x and y equal cotangent of x. Remember the other, the y equal sine x, y equal cosine of x is in another video and then there's also one for y equal secant of x and y equal cosecant of x.